Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Uh, this morning we discussed environment in literatures and environment in language and literature teaching. Uh, this afternoon we are going to discuss environment in education, especially high school education. First of all, let me introduce you the speaker, Ibu Elka Andriana, PhD. She finished her PhD in Sydney School of Education and Social Work, Faculty of Arts and Social Sciences, the University of Sydney, New South Wales, Australia. Her research is in engaging with the student voice through arts informed methods, exploring inclusion in three schools, providing inclusive education in Yogyakarta, Indonesia. And then her Master of Education was obtained on early childhood, Faculty of Education in Monash University, Victoria, Australia. Her research was on a self-efficacy and attitude of early childhood teachers about inclusive education in Indonesia. And she got uh, many awards and scholarships, alumni, <laughs> alumni grant scheme, Australia Awards, Indonesia, Sydney Southeast Asia Center, conference grant, postgraduate research support scheme, the University of Sydney, and then postgraduate research support scheme, the University of Sydney. And then also Australia Awards Scholarships and Australia Partnership Scholarships. Uh, right now, uh, she is the principal of SMA Tumbuh, or SMA oh, Tumbuh High School. And also, she is a part-time lecturer in elementary school education, faculty of education, Sanata Dharma University. And then he, oh, sorry, she also wrote uh, some journals and also was doing project. Last August, she finished uh, amplifying children's voices within arts-based service learning, emerging inclusive education practices in Indonesia with Michelle Bonati from IFIS, Postdoctoral Research Fellowship Scholars. And then uh, she also published some books, wrote uh, journals, yeah, and also reports, right? Uh, this afternoon, she is going to discuss Uh, paper in, entitled Growing Plants is Like Growing Your Own Kids, Engaging Children's Voices in Environmental Education Program. Uh, we have how many minutes? 30 minutes? 90, including the questions. Yeah, yeah. Okay. we have 90. Yeah, yeah, okay. Okay, Puelka, uh, time is yours. Thank you. Oh, okay, that's okay. I'm sorry, I, I, I usually prefer to talk by um, standing and walking around, <laughs> so it helps uh, to calm down my nerve. <laughs> um, thank you, Pak Tatang, and first of all, I would like to thank uh, Sanata Dharma University and especially Pak Tatang for uh, inviting me to talk um, and giving the session today, um, because I think this kind of uh, conference allows me to 
uh, allows me to develop and explore uh, my research interest in children as researchers and children's voice. And um, I also anticipate that uh, I could uh, receive some feedback from the audience and hopefully the audience also um, would um, uh, get some um, meaningful messages uh, from the sessions, especially from the students, because I'm not presenting alone. Uh, I'm bringing my students here with me. Uh, these three lovely boys uh, sitting at the front here. I would introduce them uh, to you later. Uh, can I please ask one of you to help me clicking the... Um, Come up. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, okay, thank you. Okay. Yes. Thank you. So yeah, um, our presentation today entitled Growing Plants is like growing your own kids. Uh, engaging student voice on environmental education program in inclusive setting. So uh, we are going to present our initial study uh, that aims to investigate what the students think, what the students feel, and what they expect uh, about our permaculture program in Tumbu High School. So, but I have to I have to say that this is a very initial study, and the study is conducted not by me, but also by these uh, students. Uh, they act as uh, co-researchers. Whoops, I think I pushed the wrong button. The right, the right, the right. <laughs> Yes, uh, why shouldn't voice? Um, I think um, uh, for us to, to develop a, a holistic uh, education system, um, we need to really involve the students uh, and we need to study what the students think and what they feel or what they uh, expect uh, around a, a particular program. So without consulting to students, I think um, what we are doing maybe is not really meaningful. And also, uh, it's not really, um, uh, especially not meaningful to, for the students themselves, yeah. And also the student voice uh, becomes means of trans transforming schooling and making the curriculum more relevant to students' needs and interest especially because in our school, uh, the students are coming from different backgrounds and they also have different needs. And also, um, uh, student voice uh, simultaneously uh, bringing uh, the consequence that uh, we need to position students as co-researchers uh, because they themselves who needs to uh, research uh, their experience and their peers' experience. And therefore, the data collection is also um, simultaneously uh, would be emancipatory or participatory. Now, the context, uh, the inclusive school context. I put inclusive in brackets because I think I myself feeling not comfortable calling the school or claiming the school as inclusive because I think all schools are inclusive or should be inclusive. And we, we know that in, in Yogyakarta, we already have the legislation that all, should, all schools should be inclusive, yeah. So our school, or Tumbu High School, uh, it's a junior and senior high school, and we have 138 students. So it's a pretty small school. It's not like a public school which has maybe 700 or more students, but we are pretty small. And as I mentioned before, our students coming from different backgrounds, and especially they have uh, diverse needs uh, in terms of special needs. 
So we have students um, uh, who has autism, we have students who, who are blind or who are deaf and maybe who have um, physical disabilities and also uh, intellectual disabilities. So uh, in each of our class, uh, we have around two to five children with special needs. And uh, what we are studying now, what these guys here are studying now is um, um, the investigating a student's voice uh, about permaculture. So permaculture is a mandatory subject in our school. In Indonesian curriculum, we have what we call prakarya, uh, mata pelajaran prakarya. Uh, I don't know how to say it in English, yeah? Pardon? Craft. Craft? Yeah, so may maybe craft, <laughs> I'm not sure. But uh, prakarya in our school, um, we decide, we have decided to um, uh, change it into permaculture. Yeah, so what is permaculture? Uh, one of the boys will explain it to you later. But it is mandatory, so all students from grade 7 to grade 12, once a week they have this subject yeah, for two hours, around two hours. So yeah, uh, basically we, we are conducting a little study and the aim is to investigate students' views and feelings and experiences of permaculture. And the approach is participatory. Uh, and um, the investigator is not me, myself, but also uh, the students here. And also, uh, Pak Bambang. Pak Bambang is our permaculture teacher. He's standing at the back right there is also helping us to conduct the study. And the method we collect data from booklet, from survey, from focus group discussion, and also observational notes. So the participant is uh, three students and Pak Bambang as the permaculture student, I mean teacher, sorry. Yeah. Um, actually, uh, in our school, permaculture is not the only environmental education. We also have Mangrove for Life, and also we have Intensive Program. So those are the biggest three programs other than the other uh, programs that um, we create uh, for ESD, um, Education for Sustainable Development. So we have many other uh, programs, but those big three is the biggest three programs. And uh, the, the mandatory and the regular program is permaculture. Uh, now I would like to invite one of our students. Uh, his name is Huya. Huya is going to explain to you uh, those three programs so you would have better uh, context and better information on what are those programs about and also um, uh, why we did or why we are conducting this little study on the student voice. Huya, yeah, come forward. Hello, my name is Huya. I'm 10th grade from Tumbo High School and I like to do permaculture because it's, it helps the environment and it's been there since the beginning of the human race. So what exactly is permaculture? According to Bill Mollison, permaculture is a philosophy of working with rather than against nature and looking at plants and animals in all their functions rather than treating any area a single product system. The next one is, uh, this is one of the activities that we do in the school. It's feeding the animals. So we feed the animals with the crops that we get in the garden. After we feed the animals, we get their feces to make compost in the garden. The animals are, there is guinea pigs, geese, goats, sheep, chickens, and turkey. <laughs> the next one is, so this, this is, uh, we're planting crops. Uh, we usually plant crops in plant boxes, hydroponic system, and basically all over the school. 
the, uh, we, should, we, we usually plant eggplants, passion fruits, chili, onions, and many more. Uh, the other, uh, the next one is. Uh, this is when we made worm compost, a worm food, for the worm composter. So we make worm food from pool wa uh, no, pond water, pond water VCO, and uh, geese feces. After we make the worm food, we give it to the worm composter. So every three days, we collect the com the compost from the worm composter for selling it or use it as fertilizer. So this is one of the products that my friend made. It's called Pupo Casting. Uh, that's it. <laughs> uh, this is when our pond, our fish pond, was filled with water hyacinth. So we need to get rid of them. So we collected them for compost and worm food and so the, so the pond doesn't dry out because the water hyacinth usually takes a lot of water if you leave it be. After that is one of the program, programs that we do once a year. It's called mangrove. So in this program, students of Tumbo High School plant mangrove seedling as a concern for the environment. Uh, after that, We don't plant seedlings, wait, wait, wait. We don't just plant seedlings. We also clean the barren, uh, barren shores that was filled with rubbish. So we collected them and we got a lot of bags of rubbish. After that is another program, but this program is just for senior high school. It's called intensive program. So in intensive program, there's two groups. The first one is the permaculture group, and the other one is the augmented reality group. In the permaculture group, we learn about permaculture. We made buck traps and hydroponic system. But in the augmented reality group, they made an app that when you scan, you scan a card that they made, it will show you a video in your phone about the permaculture group. And that's all from me. Thank you. Well, yeah, yeah, please stay for a while. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and um, so we are is one of the students uh, that we call Permacultural Ambassador, is it? Yeah. <laughs> so last year, was it last year, Pak Bambang, he won uh, Pak Bambang has a program that uh, for some students who really, really loves permaculture, and Pak Bambang um, provided like a trophy, yeah, a trophy. And did you win yes last year? Yeah, so he won last year. <laughs> <laughs> so these boys, they love permaculture so much that they just go straight to the garden or to the uh, farm animal or to the fish pond or uh, during the breaks, to school, uh, school breaks, after school, and they often stay until like 6 p.m. They don't want to go home, okay? <laughs> yeah, so that's why we uh, invite them here to, uh, to speak uh, and share their uh, experience. And what we are here today, uh, this is not getok, yeah. <laughs> this is a uh, fertilizer. <laughs> Ini pupuk, yeah. And uh, I think we are bring how many? Three, three or four? Only three. Oh, four, yeah. And he will give it to you as a gift or as a door prize, yeah, later. <laughs> Thank you, Mia. Okay, so that was basically um, information or explanation about the environmental education that we have in Tumbu High School. 
uh, permaculture, mangrove for life, and intensive program. But uh, we are conducting study on student voice only on the permaculture program at the moment. Yeah. So uh, also I have to uh, give the background that the school itself is pretty new. So we only started like in 2017. So we are only two years old. <laughs> well, Sekolah Tumbuh is pretty, well, not that old, but it's actually 14 years old. So it was founded first on, I mean, in 2005. So we started with uh, primary school one, and then we opened primary school two, primary school three, and then four and the high school. So the high school and primary school four is the youngest, the youngest one. We only two years in those uh, in that campus, and the campus is located in Bantul, Sewon Bantul. And since each of our campuses has their own uh, uniqueness or um, specialty. Yeah, for example, primary school one uh, is specialized in entrepreneurship. Primary school two is specialized in art and museum. Primary school three is specialized in global ship, uh, sorry, uh, global citizenship. And since the high school is located in Bantul, and we realize that Bantul community is pretty much um, rely on farming and yeah, those kind of thing. We decided to. Uh, take uh, environment uh, education as our primary um, uh, program, yeah. Okay, now uh, we go back to the student voice. So we collect data uh, using booklets, uh, online survey. So Renan here, he's conducting online survey. Uh, and then Ajani, he's conducting focus group discussion. And observation is coming from uh, Pak Bambang as uh, permaculture teacher and myself. Um, the booklet, uh, so uh, Wia has explained to you uh, the intensive program. So the intensive program has a booklet and in the booklet, uh, students write their um, opinions and their feelings about uh, conducting such program. And these are the, the booklet. And uh, when I read through all the booklets, some of the uh, voices are, uh, they said, I'm happy because I get to learn to create augmented reality. Uh, the program was uh, supported by Das University. So Das University is not really a university. It's, a, um, it's like a community program run by Endang Sukamti. Ben, yeah, if you know Endang Sukamti, so, um, they also open this um, a community program uh, to help people who wants to learn more about uh, design, communication, and visual. And then some of them also, some students say that uh, they're happy because they know how to make insect trap by recycling plastic bottle. Uh, they know how to make organic pesticide, no need to buy, happy to learn. But also, some of them also saying that they're feeling bored, that they don't like the the program, yeah, so, yeah, uh, uh, various uh, opinions. Now with the survey, I'm going to invite Renan. Come here, Renan. Come. Uh, this is Renan. Uh, Renan is conducting online survey, yeah, Renan. So he, he Renan and Ajani um, uh, write down some questions and then um, put it online and they um, spread it to their uh, peers and their friends uh, to 138 students in Tumbu High School. And Renan will explain uh, the results here. Yeah, Hello, my name is Renan. Uh, I'm from grade 9B, Tumbu High School. And because of this event, I make, we make two programs for our friends. The first one is survey, and the second one is focus group discussion. But I'm just gonna explain the survey one. 
So we make five question. The first question is, what thing do you like in permaculture? So they said that they like to feeding the animals, like feeding the, uh, feeding the fish and guinea pigs. And the second question is, eh, the second answer is they like to watering the plant and grow some tree. The second question is, what thing you don't like in permaculture? They said that they don't like hoeing the soil <laughs> and don't like to make fertilizer because it's hot and stinky. <laughs> <laughs> and they say that permaculture is slavery because it's it's hard working job. Okay? Next to third questions. The third question is, what do you get from permaculture? They said that they get more information about environment, like how to save earth with permaculture and a lot of things about that. The fourth question is, do you think permaculture has used our school environment and preserved it at the same time? They agreed with this statement and they want to make our school greener and make the school less hotter. <laughs> and the last question is, what do you suggest for environment pro environmental program in Tumbu High School? They said that they want to make eco brick. Uh, eco brick is like a brick that <coughs> made of trash. And the second one, they want more animals such as pigeon, cat, and maybe a dog. <laughs> And yeah, like the, <laughs> like the fourth question, they want to make the school greener because nowadays this, the school is very hot. Yeah, so that's all for, from me. And for the focus group discussion, I give to Ajani. Time and place, I give to Ajani. Thank you. <laughs> Hello, my name, <laughs> my name is Ajani and just like Renan said, I'm going to talk about the focus group discussion we did. So, in focus, we did a focus group discussion because we wanted other opinions other than the five questions on the survey. We wanted other opinions, the good ones and bad ones, from a better perspective. So we picked two students from each class, one who likes the permaculture program and one who doesn't like the permaculture program. So, the first question, do you know the relations between permaculture and the products that we consume? They said that the food, we can eat the crops and the meat, like we can eat the goats, the turkey, the fish, and we have natural food coloring because we have uh, the butterfly pea flower in our garden. So if you want to color food, we can use the natural food coloring. Next one is, The second, why? Why permaculture? Uh, we, we, have, we got two sets of answers. One's like the basic and casual answers. They like permaculture for sports, to get a healthier body, <laughs> to kill the time because they're bored. <laughs> they don't got nothing to do. <laughs> and to escape from a noisy class. Sometimes even they avoid the teachers because they don't like them. <laughs> it's just how it be, man. But we also got some thoughtful answers. Like, some answered to give back to nature the way nature gave us. To appreciate food b because we grow it ourselves. So it feels a lot better when we eat it. To appreciate the farmers. Many people undermine farmer. It is an important job. Without farmers, we can't eat the crops that they grew, and they don't get enough credit for that. To love the nature. Nature is important. Don't just build factories. It's like the same as to give back to nature. Don't ruin nature. We need to give back to them. And it's more natural than agriculture. Better in taking care of nature than regular agriculture. Yeah, that, that. <laughs> <laughs> On to the next one. Okay, the third. The ideas for the permaculture in the future. We need to plant more passion fruits. 
We got passion fruit, but not enough. We need more. <laughs> we need to plant more big trees to make the school less hotter. Plant more fruits in general. Get a chicken farm. Make a banana circle. Uh, for those who don't know, a banana circle is when you plant a banana tree in a form of a circle. And so in the middle, we can take dead plants and put it there to make it to a compost. So we have easier access to compost. Get a pet, get, get a cat as a pet to get rid of mice. <laughs> Bit of a tongue twister there. <laughs> to get a birdhouse for the dogs and pigeons we also wanted to add. And that's the end of our focus group discussion and I'm actually quite pleased with what we got from the focus group discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Ajani. Oh, before uh, we are moving on, I would like to invite Renan again. Come, Renan. I think we. I think <laughs> applause for Renan. Mm -hmm. I think we miss one uh, one thing. So um, after Renan collecting all the data, he also analyzed the data in a very simple way, of course. Can you please um, explain to us how did you do the coding? Uh, he didn't practice uh, for this year, so it's really a uh, natural <laughs> answer for, for, for him. So, basically, uh, I don't do this coding alone. I do it with Ajani in my house. So, we did a job from uh, 10, uh, 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. Mm. Yeah, it's... Yeah, it's a lot of time, but but I really proud of the I really proud of the answer of my friends about the about the survey. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, we see one by one the survey. Yeah, and we collect things like that. <laughs> just, just like that. Uh, yeah. Stay here, stay here, Anna. So yeah, so um, basically, uh, I'm, I'm trying to um, do a little mentoring for Renan and Ajani and Ria about what research is, and when you have data like from the survey, what can you do with it, right? And I told Renan, you can do coding. So what is coding, yeah? What the heck is coding? <laughs> so uh, basically, um, I asked Renan to um, find um, keywords or uh, similar... Uh, similar answer. Similar answer. So, and then he, he, he and uh, Ajani uh, read all of the answer and find the keywords and similar answers. And so basically finding themes, yeah? yeah. So uh, Renan is in year nine and I, uh, I can see that uh, he's very capable, uh, Renan and Anthony are very capable of uh, doing those coding techniques uh, for, the, for students at their age. So applause for Renan and Anthony. <laughs> Thank you, Renan. Yes, um, so before we are moving on to the discussion, um, uh, <clears throat> what uh, Renan, Ajani and we are, have been doing, uh, they're uh, collecting data and trying to analyze, but it's still very early in, in, in early stage. We need to study more and we need to um, dig more into the answers and uh, organize it into more structured um, uh, way of uh, analyzing the data and maybe finding some patterns or a model or something like that. <clears throat> and then uh, I will report it to Pak Bambang as permaculture teachers um, so that we can um, improve our program uh, better. <clears throat> so reading all of those answers uh, 
from the methods that we did. Uh, we think that environmental education is indeed broader than the cognitive content. Yeah, and there are much more eff uh, effective elements uh, that is also very important uh, part of the education of all children. Yeah, uh, we haven't explained yet the uh, the dynamics of involving children with special needs um, during the permaculture program. I think we are uh, Ajani and Renan uh, can later uh, share with you. Uh, their observation on their peers who have uh, special needs, yeah. I think they have very uh, interesting opinion and observation. Uh, later I will invite you to share, yeah. And then also identifying and responding to student voice <clears throat> may be seen as a means of reducing alienation that some students feel from their schooling, yeah. Some students <clears throat> feel that learning at uh, school is not relevant to their um, life, yeah, because uh, they're not interested, yeah, because it's, it's not meaningful for them. So I think um, investigating student voice can help the teacher uh, to make it closer and more relevant to our students' life. <clears throat> so we are hoping that we can transform permaculture and making it more relevant to our students' needs and, and interests. Now, before I close the uh, presentation, I would like again to invite uh, Via, Ajani, and Renan to share about their observation on their peers uh, with uh, special needs uh, that they um, that they uh, support or they um, uh, interact uh, so far. Uh, who wants to start first? Ajani or Renan or Via? Ajani? What is your observation on uh, your peers with uh, special needs when doing the permaculture? When doing the permaculture, uh, in the garden, there's usually one guy with special needs. He's called Aurico, we call him Auric. And he have a little bit of trouble communicating and understanding, but with his enthusiasm, he managed to, we managed to get him to understand what he should do, and now he knows what he should do when he's alone, and I think that's a good sign of this. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> yeah, thank you. <laughs> and Renan, or Via? Via? Uh, uh, so I have two special need friends in my class. Every time we do permaculture, they really liked it, but they need some help to do some things, or we we need to tell them to, uh, to tell them something. I don't know. But they actually uh, they actually like permaculture. My brain is not working. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, thank you. <laughs> he said my brain is not working. <laughs> thank you. And Renan. Hello again. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I know one guy who really like permaculture. He, his name is Mas Rehan. Uh, he is, he is autist, but he really interest in permaculture and he could do the permaculture like. Uh, Tugas, <laughs> yeah, task to do in permaculture like <coughs> Rehan, Mas Rehan really like to giving food to the guinea pigs. Thank you. 
Thank you, Renan. Yes, so from our observation, uh, from my observation, an activity like permaculture is not only about uh, environmental education, but it's also a space for our students uh, with diverse needs and diverse uh, abilities to interact and uh, to um, make their dynamics um, through the permaculture program and to help them become more inclusive individual to each other. So they take care of each other, they help each other, they support each other, and at the same time they're learning about um, permaculture, yeah. So being inclusive is not only uh, having uh, children with special needs in the school, but also a student voice like this uh, also is a, an effort uh, for schools to be more inclusive because we are listening to uh, what the students said, yeah, including those students who feel that permaculture uh, is a slavery, yeah. So <laughs> we need to find out why he thinks it's a slavery. <laughs> so, um, and also for students who are who don't like permaculture because it's hot, stinky, and hard work and dirty, yeah, etc. <clears throat> and um, we want uh, our students to be more. Uh, on control in uh, developing the programs of permaculture. So not only the teachers who design it, but uh, the, the students uh, could also design the permaculture together with um, uh, the teachers. So by, by that way, I think um, uh, we are um, cultivating the culture of a more inclusive school and also democratic school. Uh, that uh, permaculture or is not only uh, a subject or with cognitive um, burden, but more than that, uh, they love permaculture. And we are trying to, um, to, to develop students who are very positive about the future, yeah? Because I heard uh, from the last session, I remember one of the questions from the audience that, uh, he thinks that uh, some condition is not repairable, yeah? And seeing young students like this, young researchers like this, uh, I'm, I feel optimistic, yeah? That uh, we can repair uh, everything that may be already damaged or uh, as long as we have uh, a generation like we are, Renan and Ajani. <laughs> Thank you, I think after this we can discuss more. You can ask any question, not only to me, but maybe mostly to the students. Uh, thank you. Yeah. All right, thank you, Bu Elka and the three students. Let us once again give a big applause to them. <laughs> right, uh, it was very interesting presentations, yeah, uh, all of you, Bu Elka and the three students. and. I think it's very interesting. Uh, they have practiced uh, not only education and concept, yeah, but they practice uh, how to conserve and preserve the environment from the simple things. And then also they are not alienated with the cognitive and the concept, but they involve in, in, in saving the earth. Right, okay, uh, audience. Uh, it's time for you to give some questions or suggestions. I give three questions first. Would you like to raise your hand, introduce yourself, name, and also institutions? Okay, Ibu. And then two, number two, number three, right. Mike, please. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Arilia. I am from Universitas Widya Mandala Madiun. Uh, I feel mesmerized because of their presentation. And then uh, it seems like what, uh, what they have presented or what you have presented to us, it's uh, one of the, the school's activities, right? Prima culture. And my question is, 
have the students or the members of the school uh, implemented all what they have gained at school to the society in order to preserve the environment? That's the question. Thank you. All right. Number two. Yeah. Would you like to stand up, please? Mike. Okay, uh, good afternoon. Um, my name is Marcelina. I am from Universitas Pajajaran Bandung. And uh, first of all, I would like to um, say that I'm very interested in uh, your presentation and also uh, your students' presentation. And there is one thing that I'm very interested about the presentation. It is about uh, when you say it about holistic education. Uh, so there has not been a lot of um, universities or maybe high schools or junior high schools that uses the term holistic or incorporate the term into their education. And I would like to know uh, your opinion about the maybe the applications of uh, holistic education or maybe early holistic education in uh, for early education, maybe for elementary schools or junior high schools in Indonesia because uh, I have not really seen or heard about uh, this term being incorporated in uh, the education system in Indonesia and how uh, and do you think that we can actually work on that in, in, in Indonesia? I mean, this kind of um, system in education. Thank you very much. All right. Okay, questions number three, please. Thank you very much. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Ramat Agung Azmi Putra, but you can call me Agung. I'm from, uh, I'm a postgraduate student from Universitas Pendidikan Indonesia, Bandung. Uh, my question is, uh, oh, before that, uh, I like your presentations because you involve your students as your co-researchers, and I do believe that they will learn directly from what they have learned uh, in the school. So, my uh, question slowly, is... Please speak slowly. Okay. Yeah. So, my question is, uh, how, what are the challenges that you face when you are uh, involving your students uh, as your co-researchers, co and then how often do you supervise your students? And can I ask the question to Renan? Yeah, okay, so Renan, in uh, generating the questions, do you start by yourself first, or do you ask to uh, Ibu Elga, and then you try to, uh, what is it like, apply what Bu Elga has said before? Thank you. Okay, thank you very much. The first three questions. Okay, it's time for you, Puelka. Yeah. yeah, to answer this. I would also like to invite Wia, Ajani, and Renan, and also Pak Bambang at the back, if I missed um, uh, some explanation, please add, yeah? Okay, especially the first question, uh, have you implemented what you have learned at school in the society, either on your own or maybe uh, in some of our other programs, yeah? Remind me if I uh, maybe forget some of the uh, examples. Um, I'm trying to find my, um, my other um, PowerPoint that can explain the question to number two about holistic education. Wait. Do you need the slide? Yeah. Emang saya topo. Okay, first question first from Arilia Madiun. Uh, have have they uh, implemented to the society? Um, <clears throat> we um, we have some activities. For example, uh, one day we ask the students to go around uh, near the school, the community, the village. If you remember. Uh, we walked around the village and we collected rubbish, yeah? Uh, that's uh, one of the example. Also, um, we have this program that we call a leadership camp 
Leadership Camp is a program where uh, junior high school students go to a place and they have a camp, they camp there, they have camping, they camp, and also they do some programs related with the environment. And the other one is Live In, so it's, it's, it's similar with KKN, yeah? And Live In is for um, year, uh, year nine, yeah? Year nine, uh, where they live in a village and stay with families in, the, in a village. Uh, and they implement also uh, what they have learned from the environmental program that they learned from the school. So that, that's a couple of uh, examples of what they have done with the society. Um, I think we are, we are, you can explain, especially we are, because at his house he has this called uh, Bumi Langit. Yeah, and we are, I think we are can explain what Bumi Langit uh, does to the community. Uh, do you want to add more, Renan, Ajani? Have you implemented in your community what you have learned from school? Yes. Yes. Come. Yeah. You can tell about your the program in Bumi Langit. Yeah. Hmm? Yeah. So in my house, it's called Bumi Langit Institute. It's where you learn about permaculture. And there's even a restaurant that sells food that came from the garden and from the market. The, the pasar? Tra traditional market. So sometimes too, like every six months, there's a, a teaching, like a permaculture tree teaching called PDC. It's permaculture design course. It's when uh, people yeah, learn about permaculture for two weeks with my brother, with my brother and my dad. <laughs> and then, <laughs> I don't know. What else? Okay. Yeah. 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 Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. Ajani, have you? Do you have something to say? Have you implemented in your society? No? <laughs> How about Renan? No? OK. Yeah, yeah, he wants yeah, yeah. to say something. Come, come here. Come forward, Come please. forward, please. Yeah. I just pick up some trash. <laughs> <laughs> that's basically it. Yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> What about you, Renan? Same as Ajani. Same as Ajani. <laughs> okay. Now about the holistic education. Our concept of, about holistic education um, uh, comprising um, these three, what do you call that, um, principles? Yeah, so we have hands-on, mind-on, and heart-on. Basically, hands-on is we want to facilitate our students to be a lifelong learner who is always uh, interested in learning and uh, enthusiastic uh, to learn. And use, they use their not only their cognitive, but also their skills and um, their um, body and uh, that all of the activities in our school be meaningful to them. And also mind on, uh, so that students uh, continuously thinking and be critical uh, when they have problems. And also uh, um, con continuously thinking about innovation that they can make uh, at school. And hard on, uh, we want our students to be a learner who cares about what happens in the society and also reflective on their learning. So we want all of those three uh, to be equally um, facilitated, not only the cognitive uh, side. That's what we call uh, holistic education. Apart from that, um, uh, other efforts such as student voice and also uh, other uh, programs that 
make the school uh, running uh, not only based on what the adults think, but also the student things. And if uh, you th do you think, do I think that Indonesia can um, <laughs> works towards holistic education? I'm also an op optimistic person. Who <laughs> I think uh, I think I've seen I've seen some schools. They are very uh, open mind and they do um, innovative programs and they do it well. Maybe they they don't call it holistic, but the message is the same. They are doing. Uh, they are trying to provide the, their students. Um, different parts of uh, education uh, that facilitates different parts of the students' development, not only the cognitive, yeah. Although, on the other side, I also see that many schools also heavily uh, put um, effort on uh, test and uh, those kind of things, yeah. But, um, well, that's life, yeah. <laughs> um, uh, I think, um, People have different um, opinions, and school have different uh, vision and goals. So, hopefully, um, well, hopefully, more more schools is working towards that. And the last question is: What are the challenges uh, doing uh, research with children? Uh, I have to say that I enjoy it so much working with children. I, I would prefer to call myself an advocate uh, of children as researchers, yeah. When I, usually when I say children as, research, as researchers, people go, what, yeah, and can they do, can they run research, yeah. Even uh, young children as young as like four years old and five years old, they can do research, early childhood, stage they can do research yeah of course uh it's it's it, it should be um managed and designed uh, according to their stage of development but i enjoy really much working with uh, renan ajani and we are challenges challenges is sometimes i need to remind them <laughs> to work on this on the tasks for example, like, Renan, have you done the coding? Have you done the coding? <laughs> and also uh, slides, uh, preparing slides for today, and also uh, focus group discussion. I think um, because this is their first project ever for We Are Renan and uh, Ajani, I think a lot, uh, they, they have a space, they have more to improve, yeah? More to improve, especially uh, thinking about uh, what they are going to research, the questions, something like that, and also um, working on time. Yeah, it's pretty, pretty hard, especially for boys. <laughs> Renan, would you like to answer his question about the question, about the survey question? Come forward. So how do we make the questions for the survey is uh, we especially go to the principal office <laughs> and discuss uh, the three, the four of us discuss what like what the children is interested at permaculture and then we make the five questions like that. Uh, yeah. That's all. <laughs> Thank you, Renan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you. I think uh, the first three questions uh, has been uh, have been answered. Okay. I, I give the we still have time, right? Uh, the second sessions. The next three questions. Okay. One, two, three. Yeah. Four. Five. Okay, five. <laughs> maybe three first. Yeah. Three first, yeah? All right, okay. We still have maybe 35 minutes, yeah, it's okay. So thank yeah. you very much. Yeah, introduce okay. yourself. I'm, I'm Hari Susanto from English Letters <laughs> Department. His father, yes. Yeah. Okay, I'll continue about the challenge, yeah. 
So I think this is just one of the alternative school, uh, also special school or pioneer, pioneer school. But the challenge is about the recognition from the state, from the government. Mm. How about that? So it means, do you think that you, you also apply all the requirement right. from the government? Because uh, as a, a school, there is a curriculum. Yeah, about whatever. There are many, yeah, mathematics, uh, Pancasila, et cetera, all about that. And also about the obligation to follow national examination <laughs> about that. Do you think that all students follow that? Yeah. OK, that is about this one. And another is you mentioned about augmented reality Yeah, in, in permaculture. So what does it mean, augmented reality? Can you just explain? And the other is for students. I'd like to know how their attitude in, in their school. Yeah. So that is about how. One second, Ramo. Their attitude to the, to go to school. For example, uh, for all of you. Yeah. Renan, uh, Via, uh, and also who oh, the other Ajadi. <laughs> uh, in in the school, do you feel free and you feel you enjoy to mm -hmm. study? Oh, you feel that it is obligatory that you should just go to school, <laughs> like a like a normal normal student, uh, normal student, they just apply to go to school. So they prefer to play outside, yeah, not to go to school, and they don't like to to meet teacher. Just like nah, just like that. <laughs> okay, so this is for you for three. <laughs> okay, thank you. Right, okay, uh, second question. Uh, good afternoon, yeah. I'm Philip Andrew Garlitos from Ateneo de Davao University in the Philippines. Philippines. I have two questions. The first one is, you said that you promote inclusivity in your school, and we have found out that there are students who have negative attitude towards permaculture. So my question is, what do you do with the students who have negative attitude towards permaculture do you just accept them as they are like they may not like it they may not appreciate it or do you make any intervention interventive measures so that they would move from uh, seeing it as an obligation or requirement to embracing it as a way of life then the next question is looking into the student voice on permaculture what does it tell you about the overall perspective of this young people as members of the Generation Z as, as regards how they see the environment and caring for a common home as young as they are. So those are my two questions. All right, thank you. The, the third questions over there, yeah. Okay, so hello, my name is Diana Citra. I'm from Universitas Sanata Dharma. And first, uh, I think your presentation is very interesting, especially with the current status quo where children really need to aware about environment. And my question is, uh, from based on Renan's presentation, that from the survey, it is stated that some of them feel bored with the permaculture, meaning to say that there are people, who are students who are not interested with permaculture. And from the percentage, uh, which one is more higher? Is it those who are interested to permaculture or those who aren't interested to permaculture? And then my, my next question is how you uh, encourage or how you increase uh, those students, uh, the interest from the students to join a uh, permaculture program or, for example, to saving environment, for example, in as general. So that's all my question. Thank you. Mm. There are two sides of it, Romo. So one side is they are very positive about uh, Sekolah Tumbu in general, especially in Bantul, the one in Bantul. Oh, I have to. I have to inform you that uh, the campus in Bantul is starting from primary school. So permaculture is not only conducted by the high school students, but starting from primary school. So from year one, from year one, they're already doing permaculture. Um, when, uh, when we opened the school in Bantul, uh, the response was really positive because uh, the government said that um, they, 
don't have inclusive school yet, uh, such as what we are doing in Sekolah Tumbu. So they hope that Sekolah Tumbu could be a mentor or a facilitator for other school to be more inclusive. That's the that's the that's the bright side. The not so bright side is um, especially when it's dealing with accreditation. <laughs> so when we are doing the accreditation, it just doesn't make sense for an inclusive like us to meet all the standard that being made for. What, what should I say, a regular school or something like that, yeah? So it's many things we have to manipulate uh, just to meet the standard of regular. I, I honestly don't like to say inclusive and regular school, but since we have students with diverse needs, there is no way that we can teach in one strategy. There is no way that we can provide material in one one level or yeah. We have to do different strategies, different materials, even different types of assessment, yeah. And those kind of thing really doesn't meet the accreditation uh, standard. And um, yeah, I think that's our biggest uh, biggest challenge. And we are still doing UN Romo. So in the end we have to do the UN, yeah. Uh, Renan and Ajanis very soon will, will be very stressful with the UN. Yeah. <laughs> they are in year nine now. But um, so what we are doing in our daily learning activities is we differentiate between learning and test. So learning is learning, test is test. So we are trying hard to provide learning for our students. But when it comes to tests, for example, like UN, so as soon as they, they are in year nine, um, we are starting to give them strategy for them to be able to do the test, for example, like Bimble. And then approaching the time for the UN, we would um, reduce other subjects are not, not related with UN, and then we give them drillings to, uh, apa, to practice uh, working on the test. Yeah, that's, what, that's our strategy. Yeah, so, yes, so we, we, um, we have to be strategic uh, between providing learning for our students and then also meeting the standards and um, UN, yeah. About AR, uh, I'm not really the best person to answer the AR, uh, honestly. Uh, maybe Pak Bambang, if you can help uh, explaining about AR. But basically, during the intensive program, the students were divided into two groups. One group doing permaculture and the other group who are really interested in um, digital technology, they were supported and helped by Dutch University to create AR. So they create um, a program uh, and then the students create uh, like, a, like a postcard or something. And when people scan the postcard, it will take you to the feed to a video, yeah, basically that's AR is, uh, and the video will show you our program of permaculture. Yeah, so designing a program uh, represented by a postcard that has codes or something that can lead you to a, a video. That's what AR that we made uh, during the program. Gitu ya Pak Bambang ya. Itu. <laughs> and then student attitude. This is this question is for Ria, Renan, and Anjani. Would you please come forward? Three of you come. And so, what do you think of the? Maybe you can reflect on yourself. What is your attitude towards school? And you can be honest. You can be very honest to 
the audience, and maybe you can also share about your friend's attitude towards school. Whether they like school, whether they hate school, <laughs> whether they love school or her so so or, or whatever. Yeah. Uh, sometimes I like school, <laughs> sometimes though, and sometimes I don't because there's math. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's it. Yeah. 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 And, uh, why why you don't like math? Math or other things that you don't like at school. Because right. it's confusing. <laughs> <laughs> I like going to school. I like the academic part of school. But sometimes my class is just so noisy and don't respect the teacher at all. So <laughs> I can't learn anything. And it just brings me to a bad mood. Sorry? It it's just brings me to a bad mood. Oh, bad mood. Bad mood. Yeah. So, I like to go to school because how the teachers uh, explain the materials is nice. I like how the teachers explain the materials. <laughs> what about your friends? Your friends' attitude? Uh, like I said, they don't really like school. They just <laughs> like to go to school to hang out with the friends. <laughs> And I think that needs more. I think that needs more help from the teacher <laughs> and everyone. Pak Tatang, as a parent, maybe <laughs> yeah, can you share uh, your experience with your son. <laughs> okay, frankly speaking, I send I send my son to this school. Uh, he likes this school because he said that I can have a long hair. And for Romahari, before I send my son to school, the parents are interviewed about the curriculum. So is it okay for you, for your, for your sons to study in this, this, this? Yes, okay. To, to follow this curriculum? Yes, okay. So I think parents are interviewed first. So it doesn't matter, Romo. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next question uh, from Philippine. Um, negative attitude, how to encourage those students who has negative attitudes. Honestly, um, the, re the results of uh, student voice is just recently um, acquired. So we haven't done, well, we haven't done something formally based on the student uh, voice result. So uh, we know the results now, and Pak Bambang and I, and also uh, these r young researchers, after this, we would like to sit down and maybe create a strategy for those who really doesn't like uh, permaculture. But I think Pak Bambang, Pak Bambang, can you please come forward? Pak Bambang, maybe you can share, and you can speak in Bahasa. Yeah? Yes. You can speak in Bahasa. Okay. Yeah. Maybe he can he can explain in bahasa and later we can uh, translate. Uh, gimana cara mengatasi anak-anak yang nggak suka permakul permakultur Pak Bambang? Tahun lalu kami memberi sebuah tantangan, terutama yang pertama siswa saya pertama permakultur di di sekolah tumbuh baru dimulai satu tahun yang lalu. Dulu sekolah tumbuh sangat gersang karena kami menggunakan sawah sehingga berubah menjadi sekolah. Sangat gersang. Kemudian kami mulai permakultur. Ketika itu siswa kami Wia dan teman-temannya yang sudah lulus itu sangat hobi menggali. Ini saksinya. Jadi, ketika mereka mulai menggali, itu mereka menemukan batu besar bukan mereka berhenti, tetapi tidak ikut pelajaran yang lain. Tertawa dia ingat. Jadi mereka harus mengeluarkan batu besar itu supaya keluar lalu kita bisa menanam. Lalu dari lima anak tadi, empat, dimulai dari empat anak tadi, mereka akhirnya mem membuat saya menemukan ide, lakukanlah itu tahun terakhir saya beri piala. Lalu mereka berempat, terus melakukan menanam dan menanam sampai 
satu tahun selama satu tahun ini agak diganggu dengan UN sepertinya memang. Nah, kalau nggak ada UN mungkin nanam terus ya. <laughs> ya. ya, hasilnya lalu seperti uh, kami punya punya pentas seni lah semacam itu. Jadi pada akhir tahun kami memberikan piala lima buah piala kemudian tengah-tengah ada tambah satu. Kami berikan piala kepada anak yang selalu menanam dan menanam. Dan itu trik yang pertama. Trik yang kedua akhirnya banyak siswa yang lain menonton, akhirnya kami sekarang punya 19 yang seperti via hobinya menanam. Ya. Untuk jadi kalau tadi pertanyaannya, lalu apa strateginya agar anak mau melakukan sesuatu? Seperti yang pernah saya pelajari di teori motivasi ketika seseorang diberi diberi tantangan atau sebuah hadiah yang di depan mata tentu akan banyak yang melakukan. Kami seperti yang tahun lalu juga kami selalu mengatakan lakukanlah ini maka nilaimu baik dan sebuah piala besar menanti di depanmu. Itu ceritanya. Mungkin begitu Belga. Ya, yeah, so uh, based on his experience um, he has uh, some strategy for example uh, giving rewards for students Uh, such as uh, a trophy yeah, for those students who are really uh, diligent and hardworking in permaculture and it gives uh, example of the other students maybe who really uh, <coughs> motivated based on rewards uh, uh, it has uh, challenged other students to be more active in permaculture also he said uh, by observing so from four students they now have 19 students who are really uh, interested in permaculture and these 19 students give example uh, to the other students on how in how enjoyable is permaculture yeah yeah and um, yeah I think after this study on student voice we need more strategy to encourage other students to be uh, interested in permaculture but based on my observation also uh, Activities such as the one that we did before, harvesting lele, yeah. One day we harvest uh, catfish, and it's really fun, yeah, uh, for the students to be involved in catching the catfish, uh, and also cook it, yeah. Uh, some students really enjoy it, and they see that it's really, um, what is it, um, uh, rewarding yeah rewarding uh, starting from feeding the fish and catching the fish and cook and I think it becomes a very family atmosphere uh, school something like that and uh, for some students it really uh, bring them to uh, be more interested in permaculture um, which one is higher Students who have negative attitude or positive attitude? Let's ask Renan. <laughs> yeah. Renan, come, come forward here. There, so this question, uh, based on your survey, and also Ajani, yeah, based on the focus group discussion. <laughs> What do you think? Uh, is there more students with negative attitude or positive attitude? Please explain. We got a lot of answers, and as I observed, we got more positive answers, but the negative answers are are still really much. <laughs> uh, so I think there's a lot of people enjoy permaculture because at the second question like what do you didn't what 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 do what don't you like about permaculture and the real answer is there isn't a lot of my friends doesn't have any that they didn't like about permaculture so on the second question of the survey the second question is what don't they like about permaculture? A lot answered that they don't have any activity that they don't like in the permaculture. 
So in conclusion, more positive attitudes toward permaculture. Yeah. Oh, that's good news. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, okay, I, I saw yeah, uh, two persons raising their hands. Could you please stand up, uh, introduce yourself. Thank you. Yeah. That's very fascinating. Uh, the school and also your presentation, all the students and also Ibu Helga. So thanks so much for sharing the knowledge and in information. Uh, that's my simple question. Yeah. So, what uh, first? What initial idea that? What idea that initiates you to found this school? Yeah. So, and then uh, since I just talked to Pak Bambang, and then he uh, told me that the school also uh, has curriculum uh, just just like other regular schools. Yeah. Like students also learn other subjects instead of like permaculture. So. And um, I just remember that it looks like uh, vocational schools, yeah? Is that right? Uh, growing a uh, Skola Tumbu, a uh, kind of vocational school or... <laughs> because, well, uh, learning theory students also do some practices on the field, yeah? Field uh, practices, yeah? So my question is, uh, how uh, does the school differ from other vocational schools. Just like in Center Java, there is like farming, farming school, in which a student learn uh, farming, where also they learn theories. Yeah. Do students in the Skola Tumbo also learn other vocational skills, like for instance, making handicrafts, and then they can sell the crafts to a market or something like that. Yes, thank you. All right, thank you. Uh, the next one, please. Um, hello, my name is Anindia. I'm uh, from Santa Tadarma University. Um, first of all, I want to say that it is interesting to hear um, Skola Tumbu's permaculture program, and I think it's good for the youth to have awareness on environment. But since it's a mandatory um, subject in school, uh, once they finish, as in graduate, uh, is the student still continuing the, the permaculture program or any other prog um, environmental program from school? And if yes, how they do it? Thank you. Okay, uh, the first question, what initiate me to found the school? So to answer that question, uh, we have to go back in 2005. Uh, <clears throat> well, 2000 and, between 2002 and 2004, I was the director of ECCDRC, Early Childhood Care and Development Resource Center. It's an early childhood center funded by Plan International. Uh, until now, uh, it's still uh, running, and it's called Rumah Cita RC. And at that time, um, when I started the early childhood center in 2002, I think, around 2002, it was already an inclusive early childhood center. So way back on that year, um, inclusive education is non-existed yet yeah uh, so people don't know what inclusive education is and um, I started to think that after the children finish from ECCDRC and they go to primary school uh, I feel that everything or inclusive education that we have um, taught to the children would be waste of uh, waste of effort. So, and that time I know Pak Wiranagoro, Gusti Wiranagoro. 
So I have the idea, but I don't have money. <laughs> so I encourage him to open a primary school to continue the early childhood stage. So we agreed to open Sekolah Tumbuh uh, Primary School at that time, SD Tumbuh 1, SD Tumbuh 1. <clears throat> And then, uh, uh, thankfully, uh, the community uh, responded really positive. Uh, until now, we have four campuses. That was the story of uh, Sekolah Tumbuh. Yeah. And now, inclusive education is uh, widely um, promote, promoted by the government. Back in 2005, people didn't really understand what uh, inclusive education is. They thought that we are a special school. And if parents uh, enroll their children to our school, the other parents would ask, what's wrong with your children? Yeah. So, um, yeah. Uh, but now I think a lot of people starting to understand what inclusive education is. Um, is Sekolah Tumbuh vocational school? No, it's not a vocational school. It's a regular school. It's SD, SMP, and SMA, just like any other regular school. And we follow curriculum 2013, K13. So we are we have obli obligation to uh, to um, have those other subjects to be taught to our students. But we do want, uh, as I mentioned before, about the holistic education. We want hands-on, mind-on, and heart-on. That's why we created um, so many programs that uh, provide our students uh, a direct experience uh, with what, whatever they learn. Yeah. So, other than permaculture, we also have maybe Ajani uh, Renan and we can help. Yeah. Other than permaculture, we have. Um, let me see. Um, AP, yeah, area pertumbuhan. Uh, we have what we call AP or area pertumbuhan. If permaculture is mandatory subject, AP is elective. But students has to choose one from eight uh, area pertumbuhan. We have uh, Mandarin, um, digital learning with iPad. Um, pardon? Oh, uh, food education, yeah, pendidikan pangan. Um, Making batik, batik, what else? Uh, art and craft, and yes, oh yeah, design, communication, and visual. What else? Hmm? Music. Yes, see, they're better than me. <laughs> so we have uh, like eight semi-vocational uh, elective subjects. Um, yes, so that's that's the reason we want our children not only to uh, develop their cognitive aspect, but all aspect. Um, the second question: uh, What happened when they graduate from Tumbu High School? Is that the question, or did are, I? Are they still continuing uh, preserving the nature oh. after graduating from the school? That is a very good question. <laughs> um, I don't know the answer to that question, honestly, um, because we don't have yet this um, tracer study, for example. When they graduate from junior high school and move to senior high school, they still do the permaculture because that subject is mandatory from junior to high school, even from primary school. But after high school, I can't really answer that question. We yeah. need to have research about that. Yeah, I think they have, they have to take um, faculty of letters and learning eco-criticism. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I agree. Yes, but that, that question brings um, ideas. Yeah. yeah, for maybe for, for me and Pak Bambang, for treasure study, we need to track whether they still continue <laughs> Preserving the nature, yeah. After six years of permaculture, starting from year seven to year twelve, yeah. Yeah, uh, faculty of letters of Sanada Dharma <laughs> University. Welcome you all. Yeah, thank you. <laughs> right, I think uh, the time is up, right? Because at three o'clock we are going to have uh, other 
programs. Now, uh, oh, oh yeah, uh, the students will give the door prize. Would you like to stand up, please? <laughs> Plan. <laughs> Do not use the one who used air conditioner in the house. <laughs> <laughs> yes, or in the conference. <laughs> so, Renan, who do you want? Whom do you maybe want to you give it ask, to? Ask the audience. The oh yeah, maybe you can ask question, and the one who can answer can give, can get the prize. Yeah. Yeah. Quiz, quiz. <laughs> yeah, yeah, easy quiz. Oh, can I give? Can can I help the, give the questions? Okay, where is Sekolah Tumbuh located? Yeah, high school. Yeah, high school. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. Who is the complete name of the principal of SMA High School? Raise your hand, please. Who? <laughs> Just say it. Right, okay. Okay, yeah, yeah. Uh, would you like to mention the, the three programs of environmental education? Bu Ana, right? Yeah. The third prize goes to the vice dean of faculty of letters. <laughs> okay, thank you very much. Uh, I give the time, the floor to the master of ceremony. All right. Thank you, Ibu Elga. Thank you, uh, Pak Tatang. Uh, so we would like to present the token of appreciation. And the token and the certificate will be presented by uh, Dr. Paulus Sarwoto and Ibu Ana.